All right, so now when we bring in this Illustrator file, um, we should be able to fit it onto our canvas. So I can select everything and just move it down somewhere over here, um, get it onto the page, and then resize the artboard by checking on my artboard tool here. And I'm just um, measuring this box to see what the approximate width is. Um, it says it's about 484 meters, so probably um, 500 meters is about the limit at one to 200 of what we can show in Illustrator. And that's just good to know um, for the future. So if you wanted to bring in a site that was even larger than that, basically you'd have to just uh, bring it in at a smaller scale, um, like one to 500 or one to a thousand. Um, so I'm just gonna like, move my artboard and um, enlarge it a little bit so that there's room on all of these sides. And um, I've done a really bad job of centering this. So I'm just gonna move it over a little bit. All right, so now is the fun, easy part, which is just selecting all of my layers and um, giving them a stroke of black. Uh, so I'm gonna go down here into my stroke palette and just double click on that and set this to black. And that already looks um, like a pretty nice I plan, but uh, of course we're gonna set our line weights as well. I'm just gonna go in and um, change the names of these and just remove that first line work layer, which uh, gets imported from Rhino so that I just have the titles of the layers themselves. And I noticed the zero layer came on. This is actually my tree layer. So I'm going to rename that tree blocks. And then um, my trees layer is, I believe just an outline. Um, so I'm gonna rename that outline and now I can go ahead and uh, begin setting line weight. So one thing you could do is just set the building footprints to a quite thick line weight, uh, maybe a three or a four in this instance. But what I like to do with buildings is actually just reverse that so that the um, stroke becomes the fill. And instead of black, I'm gonna just double click here and select like a light gray so that the massing isn't so overwhelming, but it still shows up as like an important feature in the landscape. So I'm, I'm just not even gonna use a line weight. I'm just gonna use a fill for the buildings. And then I will set my contours. Existing contours are dashed lines. And I'm gonna check off dashed line. And then I'm just gonna have to test a few different dimensions here. So I'm gonna do a 12, 12 point dash with a, a 24 point dash with a 12 point um, space, but that's not quite big enough. So I'm gonna double it. I'm gonna make it 48 dash and 24 point gap and then see if that's good enough. That looks fine to me for this scale. And I'm gonna leave those at one point. Um, and then with the light poles, I'm gonna do the same thing that I did with the buildings. I could give them a line weight, but instead I'm just gonna select them and then reverse the, uh, the fill and the stroke so that they're just filled with black. And now um, they have a little bit more presence on the site plan there. I don't need to do anything with the outline with the center lines. What I do want to do is differentiate between the sidewalks and the road curbs. Um, so I'm gonna set those to two and then I'm just gonna select all of the lines that are meant to be sidewalks. And it's fairly easy to do. I could have separated those out in Rhino first, but I don't have that many of them actually drawn um, on this site plan. So I'm just gonna use my mouse to just select them here. And I'm gonna set those to, um, ha to half of what the curbs are, so one point. And if you find anything that you need to delete, you can just do that right here on Illustrator. And I'm going to uh, select the lawn layers and I'm gonna make it 1.5. So they're a little bit stronger than the sidewalks, but not as strong as the curbs. And now I just need to change some of the layers. So I'm um, the ordering. So I'm gonna bring the contours up to the top and set the building footprints below that so that the contours go across the whole site. And then I'm gonna bring the tree blocks up on top of the contours and turn those on. I'm not gonna do anything with those tree blocks. I think they came through pretty nicely from Rhino. So I'm not um, worried about their line weights. They look pretty good. All right, so um, we need an annotation layer here to add some text to this site plan. So I'm just gonna create a new layer here. And then I'll go to my text tool um, over in the sidebar and just begin uh, laying out some of the titles that we need here. So, um, for example, over here we have, uh, I'm gonna make a label for Riley Park. Probably should have called it Riley Park Community Garden, but nevertheless, this is it. Um, and you can you know, 
increase the size as you need up here. I'm going to just make this a little bit more bold and um, set it in place. And then I can copy that or uh, make a new text layer and keep labeling. So I've just copied it by holding down Alt while I drag on the text layer. And now I'm going to label Nat Bailey Stadium. And I'm going to create a few labels for the um, streets around this site. So just some of the more important streets, uh, East 30th up here, which uh, borders down to Ontario Street. And I'm going to just make those a slightly uh, smaller font size. And yeah, weirdly, I did not know this. You can't rotate text in Illustrator. Maybe one of the people who works in Illustrator can tell me um, why that's not working. Um, but so instead, I'm just going to use this transform and just turn it by 90 degrees. And of course, we need a title. So we have our site plan. We have our scale. Um, I'm going to make the scale a little bit of a smaller font and a little bit less bold. And then just give the site plan title an underline. Maybe the last thing that I would want to do um, is to just like make a little bit of an outline on um, the area that I'm focusing in on. So if this is your focus area here, you could draw a rectangle and then just reverse the fill and stroke so that you have a stroke around it and then go to your stroke panel here and give yourself a dash, uh, a long dash, short dash line. So a, a long dash, short dash line is like a property line and you can just set the, the gaps and the dashes here. Um, don't forget to add in a north arrow. I'm just gonna open up these diagram swatches quickly and drag in the north arrow. Um, but as long as you have your scale and your north arrow and you have some annotations on here, this is a really decent site plan. So this is a great context plan now. Um, you can use it as a key plan for your sections and for the um, transect that you're gonna show in the second part of this exercise. And just save this and um, save it as a PDF.